So between all the number one hit songs that came out of this movie, all the actors' careers who were launched and became megastars after this movie, the producers and the directors whose careers skyrocketed because of this movie, I can't believe we haven't talked about the Top Gun yet! <laughs> What up? Bobo here with Brass Real Brothers. Thanks for coming back for some more popcorn. So sorry my reviews have been kind of few and far between lately. I've just been working on late court editing that and I've been doing some live streams, but just I'm juggling a lot. I'm trying to keep it all going. But in lieu of Top Gun Maverick coming out, which my review of that will be out soon, I had to talk about Top Gun. One, it's a huge movie in the history of cinema. And two, it's definitely a part of my childhood. So growing up in the 80s and 90s, Top Gun was everything. Every kid loved saying Maverick and Goose and Negative Ghost Rider, all that stuff. And every time Danger Zone came on the radio, I freaked out. I still do kind of. But even before I knew all these directors and stuff by name, this was one of those movies like Rambo or Rocky growing up that I just, I loved it. I was obsessed with it. The jet scenes were obviously amazing, but the characters, I just wanted to be them so bad, especially Maverick. God, I wanted to be Maverick. But again, what kid from the 80s didn't? So when I was introduced to this movie, I knew nothing about the behind the scenes things with movies. I just watched them and loved them. And man, just that opening scene with the song, you know what I'm talking about. It's glorious. That's something that literally never gets old to me. It gives me the chills every time I listen to it. I think it is literally a flawless piece of composure. I love the 80s sort of electronic effects behind it. The guitar that's just screeching and roaring and just, man, it's so badass. I don't think there's anybody out there that can disagree with me on that. And if so, get out of here. Man, it's gonna be hard for me to make this video not turn into a long one just because there's so much to talk about with this movie. It just did so much for cinema at the time. I mean, it was literally, at the time, the most popular film. It may not have been like the most box office grossing at the time and things like that, but over time, it's become huge. I mean, I would seriously say it's one of the most popular films in cinematic history. And I would also say that it kind of was the first of the Jerry Bruckheimer style of action films that we all grew to love over the years, you know, especially in the 90s, like The Rock, Crimson Tide, Armageddon, all that stuff, just to name a few. But this one is kind of the one that started it. The music's done by Harold Faltermeyer, and they searched high and low to find someone who actually got their vision in this movie in an audio sense. Not only did he create the thing, but he just has all those cool 80s music cues that are in the background while they're doing the dog fights, just throughout the film entirely. But the soundtrack outside of the score with just all the Kenny Loggins stuff, the song by Berlin, resurrecting songs like Great Balls of Fire and You Lost That Loving Feeling. I mean, seriously, if you didn't see this movie in the theater, by the time you saw it on video, you were obsessed with it just like everybody that saw it in the theater. And most everybody owned this soundtrack too, even if you hadn't seen the movie. It's one of those movies that just truly took over the world when it came out. And this is back in the day, you know, when we didn't have Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and all these different platforms and the plethora of films that we have now. This is when movies were kind of singular, like what was at the theaters, what you watched. And so things like this and Back to the Future and Goonies just really, really made an impact on society and the culture. I mean, I'd honestly say it's easily one of the movies of the century, like you could say that. And later on in life, when I started getting really into film and learning about directors and writers and the people that really made this magic happen, I found out that not only was it produced by Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson, but it was directed by Tony Scott. Tony Scott and Ridley Scott have been my two favorite directors for years. God rest his soul, Tony Scott. We lost him a few years back. But him and Ridley looked almost identical to each other. They've always had their company, Scott Free Productions. And while the directing styles are very similar some of the way through, they're also vastly different. And I've loved them both for that. And just to me, their movies always stood out. From really doing Alien all the way to doing things like Black Hawk Down to movies like Matchstick Men and Gladiator. And then Tony doing stuff like this, Crimson Tide, True Romance. You see what I'm saying? These guys are just phenomenal movie directors. They understand storytelling. And the fact that I found out later in life that Tony Scott had directed this and it was produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, it just made me love the movie that much more. And when I say later in life, I'm talking about when I was like in junior high and a teenager, I realized, wait, oh, sh it's directed by Tony Scott. Ah! 
not only this movie was just awesome as far as the characters were concerned because you really get wrapped up into them, especially that opening scene when they're flying at night and everything and old boy can't land, cougar can't land. Man, it's just very, very intense right away and immediately after that scene, you're attached to Pete Mitchell and to Goose. For some reason, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Pete Mitchell being Maverick, obviously. But there's so many great visual moments in this. Like I said, when they're flying at night, they're flying at sunset, and all this actual footage of them flying these jets. Still to this day, it looks badass when you watch it. But there's just so many great moments in the movie in general, you know, like when they're singing at the piano, when he's going to ask her out in the bar and he's singing the song, you know, I mean, all that stuff. And let's not forget the one-liners. Oh my God. The amount of one-liners that are in this movie that have just stood the test of time that people still say, Shit. Let's just look at him. Great. <laughs> Watch the birdie. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. You can be my wingman anytime. Bullshit. You can be mine. Yeah. I feel the need. The need for speed. And then on top of Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer, these just amazing looking dudes for the time being in there who both their careers soared like crazy. He also had these other great actors in there like Michael Ironside and Tom Skerritt and that, the bald guy from Back to the Future. You screw up just this much, you'll be flying a cargo plane full of rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. Once I found out it was Tony Scott, lo going back and looking at movies like Crips and Tide and this movie, you can see the comparisons right away. Like the color schemes, just everything. All these super tight close-up shots to their face where you can really get, like, get into the emotion. You're seeing the sweat. And let's not forget about that love scene. That's arguably one of the steamiest love scenes to ever exist in Hollywood. I mean, look at the way they're kissing, man. They're just tonguing it up like crazy. But man, all the blue and everything that's in there, it's very art housey and everything, but that's what I love about it. Just looks great, and while they're playing Take My Breath Away. Just movie gold right there. But with like Meg Ryan and Val Kilmer and Goose and obviously Tom Cruise, I mean, I think the only career that didn't really skyrocket out of this one was Kelly McGillis' career. I think it's just, for some reason, hers just didn't go anywhere. I don't know why. But everybody else in this movie had like a legit career after this, for the most part. But the movie has everything that you want out of it. It's got all the action. It's got the characters that are just so likable and lovable. It's got the love story going on in there. It's visually amazing. The music's great. And it's got some emotional moments too. Like, God. When Goose dies, oh my God! I was terrible as a kid when I saw that. I mean, literally, I, I, I couldn't fathom that we're watching this dude die like this. I was like, wait, wait, I'm looking at my mom and dad. I was like, what do you mean he died? And then when Maverick's at the hearing and they're reading all this stuff, saying how he's not guilty and it's just focusing in on Tom Cruise, and you just hear all that 80s music starting to play. God, I love it. These proceedings are closed. You know, like Val Kilmer, I remember as a kid, like kind of disliking him a lot, his character, you know. But when Iceman, like now when I see him, and I've rewatched it recently, he's actually a good guy the whole time. He's trying to actually do the right thing. He's just actually being smart and being like, I think this guy's dangerous. And yeah, Maverick was dangerous, but he was also awesome. And of course, they come together at the end and they're all good because Maverick saves his ass. And even down to that hug, when they hug real tight and the music just has that impact right when they hit. I love it! Look, Top Gun, A+. Plus. Still stands the test of time. Just rewatched it and I loved it. I was nail biting the whole time and I know what happens, but it's just such a well-made film all the way through. And with the new one coming out, I just, I'm all up in the mood for it. So I hope it holds up. Well, that'll do it for this for you guys. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can help us make it to the top. And as always, if life gives you lemons, make some hot fresh popcorns.